Okay, hello everyone and welcome to 2022 first of all and welcome to Excel Moments. So what are we going to do in this video? I simply want to show you how to extract a unique list from multiple columns and rows of data. What you realize is that extracting a unique list from, you know, a row or a column is very easy, but when you have multiple columns and rows, then it becomes interesting, for lack of a better word. So let's look at the data I have here. I've just created in my mind a fictitious WhatsApp group, and these are my top 10 posters for the different quarters. Of course, you have duplicates because maybe the active people are always the active people. So even though I have, you know, 40 names here, but unique names, I actually have, you know, 14. Because this is what we are trying to extract, but I'm going to show you how to do it. So how do you get this done? First thing that comes to your mind is the unique function, right? You know, but when you take the unique function and then you use it around a multi-column, multi-row array, you just realize that you're not just able to get it to give you, you know, like a straight list that appends all, you know, the unique names. No matter the combinations you use, right? It's going to either give you, you know, unique rows, unique columns, but it's still going to list, you know, all the columns. And that's not what you want. So let me show you how to get this done. And I kind of take it a little sequentially and, you know, build the formula up and we'll, we'll get it all fixed. Okay, so if I were to extract one after the other, let me just put here R and C to represent row and column. If I were to extract the data, what would I need to do? I'll start from the first name here. In this database, you know, Rick is in row one and column one. Okay, so this is row one and is in the first column. So it means the first name is actually in row one, column one. The next person I'll be extracting is David, who will be in row two, same column one. The next person will be Celia, three, column one. You can see the sequence already. It's going to go all the way to the last row, which is row 10 and column one. That's Wayne. Okay, and once you have done with that, you come to the next column. Okay, the next column will start again on row one, you know. So the sequence is already obvious, but this time you are going to be extracting from what column two, okay? So it means the same thing is going to happen again, right? And this time you are going to be extracting from column three, and that's the way it just goes. So what it means is that for the row, we need to be able to create a sequence of one to 10, one to 10, one to 10. Whereas for the column, we need to be able to create a sequence of 1, 10 times, 2, 10 times, 3, 10 times, and so on. The reason is 10 is just because we have 10 rows of data, okay? But once you have that number in mind, of course, you can always make it dynamic, build it into your formula. So that's what we want to go ahead and do. So how do we create a sequence of 1 to 10, repeating that, or 1, 10 times, and repeating that 2, 10 times, 3, 10 times, and so on? Once we get whatever we need, you know, we'll feed that into an index function. So the index function can then extract for us the exact elements that we need. So let's come here. Let's just write row column. So what I want to do now is to try and create a sequence of 1 to 10 that repeats. The first thing is to start with the sequence function. Start with the sequence function. You know that you have 40 items here. So you could just use the count A. You know, it's going to count the number of, you know, non-blank cells in there. Okay, so you have a sequence of 1 to 4, right? Depending on the number, that's what you're going to have. So now I'm trying to create 1 to 10, 1 to 10, 1 to 10. I know because I already know where I'm headed that if I find the remainder when these numbers are divided by 10, I'll have something close to that. Because if 11 is divided by 10, the remainder will be 1. 12 will be 2, 3. So irrespective of where the number is, you would have a remainder that follows the sequence you want. So how do you get the remainder when a number is divided by another? You just use the mod function. So I use mod and say mod of this comma 10, meaning divide this, these numbers by 10 and give me the remainder. Okay, so now you can see it has a sequence that isn't too bad I mean, relative to what we are looking for. We have 1 to 9, but you actually see it's like 0 to 9, you know, so 0 to 9, 0 to 9. But we need to adjust it a little to get 1 to 10, 1 to 10, 1 to 10. First of all, I could take out 1 from here. If I take out 1, you will see how the sequence is going to change. Do you see what's happening now? It's now 0 to 9, 0 to 9, 0 to 9. So since you have 0 to 9 and you need 1 to 10, you essentially just do a plus 1 at the end of it. Okay? All right. So plus 1. And then you have what you need. 1 to 10, 1 to 10, 1 to 10. And that's the sequence for the rows. For the columns, we need 1. 10 times, 2, 10 times, and so on. So we start off with the sequence function. We do our count A still, right? Okay, so select our data, 
Now we have our 1 to 40. Now in this case, we know that we need 1 10 times. So what I can do first of all is I just divide by 10. I'll divide by 10 and see what I get. Now look at what I have. 0.1 all the way to 1. Okay, everything here is between 1 and 2. Everything here will be between 2 and 3, you know, and so on. So it's easy. You can see that if you round everything up from here, if you round everything up here to the nearest integer, they would all become 1, which is what you want. If you round everything here to the nearest integer, they will all become 2. So what you just do here is just to do a round up. Okay, so you say round up and then you put at the end there comma 0, right? Okay. And that's it. You have the sequence you want. Ones, twos, threes, fours. So with this, you know, our index function is pretty much done. Okay. So let's come here, delete this. So what I'm going to do is just um, maybe just copy this to the clipboard. So let me just open the clipboard um, so I can clear. So I'm just going to copy this expression here, this. So that's for the row. Okay. And then this is for the column. So I'm just going to select this. Okay. All right. So good. So now I'm going to come here and then do my index function. So I'm going to do index. And I'm going to select this. Right. That's my range. For my row. So I'm just going to pick. This is for the row mod. So I put that in there. I put a comma for the column. I pick this. Right. And then I close the bracket. Right. So you can see now that with that sequence, it's picked, you know, these are the 40 names and they are in order, right? You can see Rick going all the way to Wayne. So that's Wayne here. And then you now see Ken, which is here, going all the way to Menda Tracy, so which is here, right? And so now we have everything we need. The only thing we just put around here is just to wrap this. I can close the clipboard now. It's just to wrap this in a unique function, right? So unique right and then you know close this right and now we have a unique list and this unique list was just you know gotten from um you know knowing the row where they are the column and then you know working based off that so just an interesting way you know to look at it there are other ways to solving the problem you know but this is what i decided to show in this video i would do a second one where i would use an interesting function, which I won't disclose now, but you may have already seen it. <laughs> but you have to wait, you know, to watch that video to find out for yourself. So if you like this video, please hit the like button. I guess this is a good way to start the year. You can also subscribe to the channel, Excel Moments. Uh, for now, I'll say I'm out.